Welcome everybody, could you please join me in Gasho to begin? Namo Amida Butsu. Namo Amida Butsu. Namo Amida Today I am very happy to introduce one of our CB staff members, Brian Koichi Mizuchima, director of our BCA youth programs and also our audiovisual guru. Many of you know Koichi from his working directing our various CB programs or maybe from his YouTube videos of him singing with his daughter Ellie, which you could also look up later. Koich is an important member of our BC staff, enthusiastic, talented in many areas. Koich is from Sacramento, California, and married to Janet. And as I mentioned, they have one daughter, Ellie. Have you not seen them? I would really recommend you hear his singing. He's not singing today, but he's a very good singer. I think it's genetic. His father sings, he sings in Ellie's. But Koichi has always been active with BCA and the Sacramento Bets in, in various capacities. However, many of you may not know that previously Koichi was the owner and chef of three Sacramento area Japanese restaurants, Kamon, Osaka, and Taiko Sushi. So today with the beginning of our season of Thanksgiving, we thought it would be a good time for Koichi to share some of his cooking expertise for all of our upcoming family dinners. So thank you, Koichi. Thank you, thank you so much, Reverend Jerry. Thank you for that very, very nice, very nice introduction. Um, and welcome everybody. And thank you all for joining us here on this uh, Saturday morning or afternoon or evening if you're dialing in from different time zones. So today we have switched gears a little bit. We're gonna, we've given you a lot of educational and quality sessions here from the Center of Buddhist Education. But today, uh, maybe in the spirit of the holiday season, we're going to give you some cooking tips. And uh, I'm going to give you some sushi making techniques which are good for the home. So obviously we're going to be using some restaurant techniques and tips, but I like to do things in a way that all of you can do it right from the home. So without further ado, let's get started. Um, Sushi, uh, as many of you know, there's a little bit of a question as to how it historically started, but the sushi in its current form has not been around for that long uh, in terms of, you know, the course of time. It began when fishermen used to catch fish uh, out of the ocean and they didn't have refrigeration. So oftentimes they would heavily salt the fish and they would pack it in kome, in the uncooked rice, and that would help extract the moisture from the fish and kind of dehydrate it and preserve it for the long term. And in the old days, they would actually just kind of get rid of that rice, you know, but as uh, times got harder and there was famine, they started actually cooking that rice and utilizing it. And that's kind of the beginning stages of where that flavored rice was formed. So sushi is actually defined by the sushi rice. So what I'm going to do is, since sushi rice is where everything begins, I'm going to share with you a little video of how to make sushi rice at home. So I'm going to try to do my share screen here, and let's watch this for about a minute and a half, okay? Thank you. 
So um, hopefully that gives you a little bit of an idea. And there was a little recipe in there for the sushi seasoning vinegar, the sushi su. So when we post this video back on the CBE YouTube channel, I might even put that little recipe in the description for you. So it's really easy. Mix it together. Make sure you pour it on while it's hot. Okay. So that's the building block of everything, the sushi rice, right? So the sushi rice is actually what defines sushi. It's not the ingredients. It's not the stuff that's on top or in the middle. It's actually the rice. So people hear the word sushi, they think it only means raw fish, but that's not necessarily the case. If I get a hot dog and I put the sushi rice with the hot dog, it's sushi hot dog, right? So it's the rice that defines sushi, okay? So let's begin with uh, some other ingredients, right? Um, what is this? Everybody knows what this is. This is nori, right? So nori is a dried seaweed. And usually when you get it, um, you get it in these big, not, they're not big sheets, but they're kind of sheets like this, right? The full sheet. And um, you want to carefully pull it out here. The reason I'm doing it on the side is because it flakes a lot. See, as you can see, I'm flaking it all over the place. Okay. So what we're going to do is see the sushi nori is like this. It's not actually, I don't know if you can see it, but it's not a perfect square. It's a little bit of a rectangle. Yeah, it's a little bit of a rectangle. So do you see these lines? These are the horizontal lines, and that's where you're going to bend it. And we're going to fold this in half, okay? I'm having, okay. We're going to fold it in half, and then we're just going to pinch it up. And if it's crispy, this is how we get it into the size of sheets that we're going to use, okay? So that's how you prep your sushi nori, okay? I'm going to set that aside for now. And that's how you get that nori set up, okay? You're going to start with that. And uh, there is a smooth side and a rough side on the nori. There's a kind of a rough side, and then there's a smooth and shiny side. So we are going to get in the habit of always putting the smooth side down on our cutting board, okay? And the reason you do that is because when you put the rice on top, the smooth side will be on the outside if you choose to roll it that way, okay? Another thing I'd like to do today is I thought I would begin with some basic kind of cutting techniques, okay? So let me start with this. Um, okay, let's just start with this really quick. I'm going to just show you a couple basic things. Like when you cut like a lemon, and this is whether you make wedges or, you know, when you put it in drinks or something like that, when you cut a lemon wedge, we're not going to use wedges today, but I thought since I was doing a cooking demo, I'm just going to show you all. You want to cut it on the poles, uh, you know, on the, uh, if this is north and south. So this is the way you cut a lemon, okay? You cut it this way. A lot of people do it the other way. When you do it sideways, that's going to be more for when you're squeezing it out. If you want to be fancy, you can cut a little bit off the top, right? And cut a little bit off this edge right here, okay? And then this is how you make lemon wedges, believe it or not. Just cut them the long way. See, now you get a nice wedge. And this is what you're gonna use for, you know, squeezing into drinks or putting it on the edge, okay? A lot of people do it the wrong way and it makes it come out in, the, in a different presented way, okay? Now, for sushi presentation, what we're gonna do is we're gonna take this half. What I like to do is slice them real thin. You'll notice when I'm cutting, I always make my claw hand like this, it's a claw and I put the knife up against it, okay? So that's really the key to cutting. So you, you put the knife against your fingers, ever so slightly brushing them, okay? And what we're doing now is we're just making little lemon slices, and we'll use this for presentation when we dish up our final um, dishes, right? We'll use this just to present, okay? And we're just gonna leave that right here for now, okay? Okay, so that's kind of a basic limit. And I know this is super random, but I'm gonna do it right now anyway, okay? It's a cooking show. All right, what's this? Yellow onion, right? Okay, we're not, we're not gonna use yellow onion in sushi making at all, okay? But here's what you do. When you get an onion, cut it in half. Again, I always go north and south pole, right? I like cutting my stuff like that. When you cut this guy in half, okay? We're gonna cut it in half and this is how you get onion slices for making yakisoba and other dishes. We're going to cut the little end off here. We're going to cut the little end off here. Okay. 
Then, now, you can peel off all this stuff, right? You peel off this top layer, all right? And that's how we get to the good part of the onion, okay? Okay, we peel that off. Now, this is how you cut onion. Don't cut it this way. You're not making onion rings. This is how you, I guess, for stir fry, for julienne, right? You cut it with parallel to the, to the lines of the onion. So same thing. Get your claw down. Don't let those fingers stick out. Make them clawed down. And just take your time and practice. And when you do this, you're, you're actually touching your fingers, and I'm ever so adjusting as I go, right? And then when you get better, then you can learn how to chop, right? Okay? And then have stuff fly all over the place, okay? So this is how you actually cut your onions. And now, see, they're all good for a stir fry. Okay, so that has nothing to do with sushi making, but it's something that I've always wanted to show people at home how to cook. And you actually don't want to cut onions on your sushi board because that's going to be kind of functified, right? But it's okay because you can't taste it. You can only see it on TV. So we're going to do that. Okay, so I'm saving that for later. Okay, I wanted to show you that onion technique. That's got nothing to do with nothing. Okay, let's get back to the sushi ingredients, okay? All right, so we started with our nori, right? We started with our lemon, and we're going to cut a little bit of fresh green onion, okay? Now, I already washed these at home before I came, and I always pinch off all the gross parts right at the top. You know how you do that, right? Pinch all these off. Make sure you only have the beautiful part of the green onion, okay? And we're going to chop off a little bit of the white. I do leave some of the white on. You know, people debate over that. What I like to do since I'm going to dice these up really thin is I actually like to split the stock a little bit. You know, and what this does is it helps you make chunks that are not too big. And we're just going to dice these up. Okay, so this is the same thing. We're just dicing them up. This is all going to be for kind of a garnish and a presentation at the end of our sushi roll. So this is not uh, necessarily a mixed-in ingredient. This is just going to be like the garnish on top of the roll, okay? So we're doing this, and we're going to chop all these guys up nice. And I like to mix it up, right, like that, okay? So we're going to put this in the side here, and we're going to put this in a little oh, bowl right here, okay? Yeah. And this is all going to be for garnish later on in the dish, okay? I'll leave that right there, okay? Now, we got our green onions ready, and you'll notice, right, that I am starting with kind of the veggie stuff, right? I'm not, I'm not cutting the um, fish and stuff uh, on my, I'm, I'm using a separate board as well so I don't contaminate my main sushi board, okay? All right, so that's green onions. We got that ready. Um, now we're gonna start doing, oh, you guys know what this is, right? Where is it? Oh, I lost it. Where, where, <laughs> where oh, there it is. <laughs> Where's my cucumber? Okay, so. This is a cucumber, right? What kind of cucumber is it? It's English cucumber, right? It's an English cucumber. What I want to do is I want to cut it. Um, so we cut off the ends, of course, right? And remember, even though it comes in that plastic wrapper, you want to wash this thing, okay? Don't just take it out of the wrapper. I like to still wash it. So I already washed it, and it's ready to go. So I'm going to cut a little bit off the end here. And then I'm going to cut the length at about one half of a nori, right? So that's about half. I don't know if you can see it that way, but that's about half right there. So I'm going to cut it about half, let's say. Right, ar whoop, right, around, right around there, half, right? Okay? And what that's going to do is it's going to give me just the right size of cucumbers to cut for the rolls that we're going to use. So for the English, these seeds are actually edible. Um, it's not like a regular cucumber where you have to cut the seeds out, but I will remove some of them. So as you can see, I cut this in half, and I'm going to cut it into quarters, okay? And as I cut it into quarters, I'm going to just remove a little bit of the seed. And again, like I mentioned, you can eat the seed, so it's not like you have to get every bit of seed out. But I do like to remove some of it because it does have a little bit of moisture maybe in it. So when it gets in the middle of the rolls, it will make it a little bit soggy. So that's the only reason why I'm removing some of these seeds, okay? And then when I do that, I have these nice little sticks. I'm going to just kind of chop them up here. 
and you can make them as skinny or as thick as you like depending upon how much you like cucumbers but I'm going to be using them in other rolls so I'm going to cut them a little bit on the skinny side because I'm going to add them in with other ingredients okay all right so we're going to leave these up here as well so we got our English cucumbers we got our green onion oh I forgot to mention do you guys at home anybody know what this is right here you know what this is? Yeah, masago, right? It's a tiny smelt row. We'll go back to here. It's a smelt row. <laughs> hey, we're one behind. That's all right. That's all right. Okay, so that's masago. Um, Tobiko is the flying fish row. It's a little bit larger, believe it or not. It's a little bit bigger, but it's really hard to tell. Okay. Okay. So we got those main things going. Oh, you know what I forgot? You know what I forgot here? Okay, check this out, guys. Have you seen these before? Anybody seen these before? Shrimp tempura, of course. You know where you can get these? You can get these at Costco. I know, crazy, right? So <clears throat> you can buy these at Costco. I got my air fryer set up there already. Um, but what I'm gonna do is I gotta get these guys in there now because when they cook, they're so hot, I can barely touch them. So let me get these started cooking right now. Got my air fryer over here, okay? And I'm gonna throw these guys in here and we better hurry up and get these started cooking here because I'm not gonna be able to even touch them, they're so hot, okay? All right, let's get these cooking here. And I usually put this guy on like a French fry mode and I can literally do it for like six minutes, five minutes, five, six minutes. It'll cook in the air fryer, it'll be ready, it'll be crispy and it'll be too hot to even touch with your bare hands, okay? All right, okay, so. Now, the other thing I'm going to prep here is I actually went to the fish market and got some tuna, right? Some ahi tuna loins. And um, I do have another video online that shows you actually how to cut them into these strips. This is kind of the key thing. So I, I have another video. Maybe I'll put the links in the description um, when we post this video on CBE. So that's kind of another video to get you to this point. But when you get to this point, and you have a nice loin like this, what I like to do is I like to chop off a little bit from the sides, right? Because we want to always make it clean and presentable, right? So we're going to cut off a little bit on the sides. And what do we do with these? Do we throw them away? No, never, never throw away anything in, in cooking, right? We are going to use all of this. And this is what people use for tekkamaki. But in this case, we're going to kind of dice it all up and we're gonna make this uh, into like a spicy tuna. We're gonna use all this tuna. Nothing ever goes to waste, right? So we're gonna put all this into our little mixing bowl right here, and we're gonna keep going, okay? So for now, what I'm gonna do is, I'm actually gonna kind of chop most of this one up because as you can see, out of the two loins, this loin is a much nicer quality. So we're gonna keep our nicer quality one for the nigiri pieces that we're gonna do, okay? And we'll get to that a little bit later. And we'll use this other one, maybe for some tekkamaki or something a little bit different, okay? So with this piece, I don't know if you can see this on camera, but there are grains to the fish. Um, it's kinda hard to see, kinda hard to see, but there are grains. You could see those lines a little bit, right? A Little bit. So the grains are ever slightly this way. So they go this way, they go this way. So when I cut my nigiri, since the grains are going this way, now it's upside down, I'm gonna slice against the grain. So you'll hear that term often um, when they say cutting sashimi, you wanna go against the grain. Again, there's another video that shows you how to actually slice the fish that I have. So you can probably look at that one a little bit later, but for now, we're just kind of prepping the ingredients. So I'm just going to kind of go through this part a little quickly. Now I'm making little slices for nigiri, right? Ooh, these are big. You must be a good customer. You must be very special, special good customer if you get nice big pieces like this, right? Wow, that's special. Wow, look at that. Isn't that beautiful? Nice. Nice. Okay. So the rest of it, like I said, I'm not, nothing goes to waste in cooking, right? Nothing goes to waste. We're going to chop this all up and uh, we're going to put this in our mixing bowl as well. I'm going to leave this just right here for now. Okay. And 
we are going to get this going. Okay, now we got all that stuff going. This is why I have a separate board. I'm gonna set that board aside because that's got all fishy fish juice on it. We'll leave that one over there. All right, we'll leave that guy over there to rest, okay? Now, now that we have all of our tuna here, okay? What I like to do is make a little spicy tuna mix. And um, this is just, let's just do this real simple. Because again, this is home style, okay? So we're just going to use regular, <laughs> regular mayonnaise, okay? Regular, this is nothing special. This is not a Japanese secret recipe, uh, regular mayonnaise, okay? And believe it or not, we're just going to squirt this guy. I know this sounds almost crazy, but we're going to squirt, squirt that in there. Boop, 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 okay. Oh, I'm almost done with that mayonnaise. Bye-bye. Okay, we're going to squirt a little bit of mayo in there, and I like to use sriracha sauce, right? This is my Red Rooster favorite sriracha sauce here. Make sure you shake that guy up. And if you want it super hot, you put a lot. If you just like me, I'm a little bit weak. I don't put in too much, not too muchy because I'm a little bit on the soft side, okay? I'm a little bit on the weak side. And that's it, that's it. Just a little mayo and, spi and uh, sriracha spicy, and we're gonna mix that up. And believe it or not, that's just, a, that's a good flavor. Um, you don't want to go too over on the mayonnaise. It's like, a, um, you know, you don't want it to be mushy, like, you know, but, but you want it to still cover all the pieces. You want to make sure there's no, um, you know, clocked, clots of uh, sriracha sauce too, right? You want to make sure it's spread out. Okay, I think that's good. I think that's good. Okay. Um, final thing here we're going to prep. Um, oh, you guys, I didn't, I didn't bring the whole package, but you know what these are, right? These are the Kanikama sticks, right? Um, you guys all know what these are. These are Kanikama sticks, right? And so they're actually, um, it's not a shellfish. It's an imitation crab. So there's no, if you're allergic to shellfish, you can still drink, the, uh, eat these, okay? Now with these guys, there's a plastic wrapper on the outside. So if you buy them frozen, which sometimes they are, you have to make sure when you thaw, and I, these are all thawed out. I left them in the fridge all last night, but there's a lot of water content in them. So you do actually have to squeeze out the water. And I'm showing, I'm not doing that on camera, but you actually have to squeeze out the water a little bit. Okay. For that. So don't forget to unwrap them. <laughs> the, you don't want any plastic in your sushi. You got to unwrap them. Okay. A lot of people miss this step. I've seen it happen. It's terrible. It's very terrible. Never happened to me, but it's, I've seen it. Okay. So we're going to unwrap these guys. And believe it or not, they're very stringy. They're kind of like, a, a, I don't know, string cheese, I guess, if you, if you want to compare it to something. So they're really stringy. So if you chop them up, if you just chop these up like this into little strips, they'll just break right apart. Okay. They'll just break right apart. So, um, as you can see, they just, they just, they just break right apart there. See, they just break right apart. And so what I'm going to do with this one too, is we're going to try to mix this with a little mayo. Okay. On the side. Okay. I don't even think I can mix that. I think that bowl's too small. That was poor planning on my part, but you know what? We're going to see if it works. Get a little bit of best food in here. Okay. Okay. And let's see if we can squeeze the last of this mayo out here. And I didn't, this, all right, this is, okay. This is going to absorb a little bit more mayonnaise. Okay, guys, because it's this, it's this cunny, cunny salad. So um, that's going to absorb a little bit more. Okay. And we are going to mix this guy in here too. Okay. We're going to mix this. I didn't bring a big bowl. I should have brought a bigger bowl. So add more mayo to this one, okay? This is not like the spicy tuna where you're doing it um, kind of sparingly. This is something that you actually want to have like a lot of mayo in here, okay? Okay. Okay, so looks like we got most of our ingredients set, right? Like we have, um, we have our spicy tuna. We got our cunny salad, we like to call it. We got our um, tuna cut. We have some lemon cucumbers, green onions, masago, and some other stuff there. Okay. So it looks like we're kind of ready to go here, I would say. All right. 
So before I begin, I'm going to give you another couple, give you another couple techniques here. And this is something that you probably will never use at home, but uh, I'm just going to show you anyway, since we're here, okay, since we're here. So remember what I said about the nori, right? Um, and it does have some, you can see the vertical lines, right, or the lines going through. So again, that's the direction you're going to cut them in. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to make three strips from this. And unfortunately, it's thirds, so it's not like, um, it's not like a perfect, uh, you know, um, science, but you're going to cut them into thirds. Okay. And the reason I'm doing this is I'm going to make a little bit of a different shape sushi here. And you'll see what it is in just a minute, okay? You can use kitchen shears too. I've seen a lot of people use kitchen shears. I'm doing this kind of the hard way just because I don't have the other stuff. So these are the little strips that we're going to make. And we're going to set these aside for now. I'll leave a couple of them here. Okay, I'll leave two of them here, okay? Now, this is what's called gunkan. Gunkan style sushi, all right? It's a two-piece sushi. I believe gunkan means battleship, and you'll see why in just a moment, okay? So um, I have a little bowl of water here on the side of my sushi rice, and it's just water. It's nothing, there's nothing in it. There's no, uh, you know, salt or vinegar or anything. It's just plain water. And you want to moisten your hands when you're dealing with sushi rice, but you don't want them to be drippity, droppity, sloppity, okay? Like, don't make it like raccoon. Ra that's no good. We don't, we don't like to do that. So just give it a little dip. Just a little dip, a little dip, wet your hands, and you gotta clap off the excess. I have a garbage can down here. It's not going on the floor, okay? A little wet, clap off the excess, okay? For this gunkan maki, I'm gonna grab just a little bit of rice here, okay? Just a little bit of rice here. And I'm going to lightly, ever so lightly ball it. And what I'm gonna do is make a teardrop with this hand, <laughs> make a teardrop with this hand, and then kind of just close it off with this hand. I don't know what the best angle is. Can you see that shape? Can you see that shape? It's like that, yeah. <laughs> okay. And then that's one, and I'm gonna make a second one. Same thing. And I'm doing it light. Yeah, I'm doing it light, not too, not too uh, big there, light. Okay. And hopefully you can see I got these two little, they really look like eyeballs, huh? Eh. They look like eyeballs, right? And I'm going to put those on my cutting board side by side. Okay, right here. And what we're going to do is, um, remember those two nodis that I made? Get the clean side on the top. Okay, the clean cut side on top. Now this part, <laughs> you're going to get confused here because it's hard to see on video and it's hard to see kind of reverse. But when I'm, I'm going to hold them like this on the outside. I'm going to grab these two, and I'm going to loop these nodis around this way. I'm going to loop them around that way, and then I'm going to separate them and loop them around again. Okay? And now, these, this is why it's called gunkan. There's like a little tiny, they look like little boats, right? They're little boats. And so what you do is, when you present these, when you put them for your presentation on your plate, you put them like this, and you see how I angled it ever so slightly, angled them a little bit apart like that. And then you can put whatever you want inside. So some people will put um, like masago on here. Oh, masago is the worst to work with, by the way, uh, for those of you at home, because these little tiny eggs, they just go everywhere, and you can never get them. You can't get them out. I mean, they're just, they just stick everywhere. It's terrible. But, you know, anyway, see, as you can see, it's flying all over the place. Okay, and so this is like an example of gunkan, right? What else can you put in there? You can put all kinds of stuff. Like you can even put, uh, if you wanted to, you can even put like uh, probably spicy tuna or crab salad in there as well, right? So if I made another gunkan, I'm making these little teardrops like this, okay? And um, doing another one of these like this. Okay, we got those right there. And then we're going to get two more of our little nori strips here on the sides and I don't know if you remember this part but right <laughs> go this way and then we go this way okay and so we'll put these on here too 
And this is how you can add whatever ingredients you want inside. Okay, you can add, you can add anything you want inside. See, we can put this kind of salad. Do you guys, does everybody know what um, wakame salad is? You've seen those at the uh, Asian grocery store, right? Wakame salad, you know, the seaweed salad. You can even put those on top. See, this gunkan is so versatile because you can put anything you want in here. Because remember, what did we define sushi as? We defined it as the rice. So once you have this sushi rice down here, you can make anything you want, okay? And then it's going to be sushi, okay? All right. So what was that called again? Gunkan maki. G U N. K-A-N, Gunkan. That's kind of like a battleship sushi, okay? So that's um, the one style. And so this next one, let's show you. Let's get right into the um, rolls. As you can see, I'm fiddling around quite a bit with my cutting board because it's important that our cutting board is dry. You know, we want it to be dry when we put the nori on there because if the nori gets wet, it gets, all, gets kind of weird and, you know, it gets all messy and funky, and we don't want that, right? Okay. All right, so <laughs> I just saw somebody's comment say, you can't stop me from putting onions in my sushi. I love it. I love it. That's excellent. <laughs> and that's the beauty of sushi making. You can put whatever you want inside. That's the beauty of it. I love it. And that's why it's so versatile and fun to do. Okay. All right. So we're getting our piece of nori. Remember what I said? Shiny side, rough side. I'm rough and I'm shiny. Okay, so which side do we put down? Put the shiny side down. For this next roll, it really doesn't matter, but I'm getting you into good habits. It's about building the right habit. So here's my little, little deep moment here. I know this sounds kind of funny, but sushi making is, sushi making is so reflective of your personality. Um, so much of who you are comes out because after all, we're not cooking anything, are we? We're not applying heat. We're not adding a whole bunch of different ingredients. We are using very pure, very simple, very raw ingredients. So the only thing there is in sushi making is your presentation. It's your technique. It's your care of selecting and preparing and getting your ingredients ready, right? So it's really reflective of your personality. If people are kind of rushed and they don't care or they're not detail oriented, that will come out in their sushi making. But if somebody is meticulous and caring and they really care about the artistry, that too will be reflected in their sushi making because sushi is not just eating with your, with your tongue and your mouth, it's eating with your eyes, right? That's the biggest part of sushi making with the colors, the textures. You eat sushi with your eyes. Okay. So here we go. We're going to start putting our nori down on the cutting board and we're going to get our sushi rice. Remember what I said about the water? Don't make raccoon water. Okay, don't be a raccoon and make all these crazy bits in here. Just, just barely enough to wet your hand. Clap it off. Okay, clap off the excess so your hands aren't dripping and you're going to grab your sushi rice. Okay, now I grab, I don't know, what do you say? Baseball, baseball, not a softball, baseball. Light, 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 light. But I am making an egg. I made it into an egg shape. I happen to be right-handed, so I'm gonna put this ball in my right hand. And I'm gonna start on the top of my nori. And I'm gonna do my best to stretch this ball. I'm gonna stretch this ball just across the top of it, evenly, kind of. I mean, even enough, right? That, I know you can't see that, but it's like that. See, it's like that, right? It's not, it's not covering the whole thing. It's only on the top of it, okay? And what I'm going to do now is I wet my hands again, and I'm going to push this rice down. I'll do it from the side so you can see it. I'm going to push it down using my fingertips, tips of my fingers, and just the thumbs. And I'm going <laughs> to, excuse me, I'm going to really manipulate this rice like it's pizza dough. Look, I'm pushing it down. Look at that. Pushing it down. I'll do it from this side first so you can see. Push it down. Push it down. See? using my fingertips and I'm really maneuvering the rice, okay? You have to take command of this rice. You cannot approach this thing halfway. Don't be weak about it. Don't be wimpy. Don't be uh, timid, okay? You got to approach this thing with confidence and you got to attack it. 
The other thing is I want to make sure that there's no um, black edges on there, right? I covered every little nook and cranny of that, right? Okay. <coughs> and now I got a little sesame seeds and we're going to just sesame seed the top of that guy, right? Okay. And here's the trick that everybody wants to know. Like, what do you do with it? Well, guess what? You just flip it over on your cutting board. That's why I'm using these kind of plasticky ones. I mean, some people don't prefer the plastic, but flip that guy right over there, okay? What are we gonna add? Let's add a little cucumber. Let's put a little English cucumber in there. And let's put some, uh, let's put some uh, Connie salad in here. Let's put some crab in there, right? Let's put a little crab in there. Why not? Okay. Maybe a little bit more, a little bit more. Good customer. Okay, they're a good customer. You're a good regular customer, okay? And, uh, oh, we forgot. We got to put our avocado in there, too. Let me um, show you how to cut that real quick. Um, when you choose your avocados from the store, you want to get an avocado that is, if it's a Haas avocado, like a California, or is it California? I don't know where they're from, but Haas avocado, you're going to notice they have a little bit of a brown. You're going to feel them. They're not going to be green, 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 and they're not going to be hard as a rock. You don't want them too mushy though. Just a tiny bit of give, tiny bit of give, nice color brown. Another trick that I heard is if you pull out the, uh, this little pit part right here, that little pit thing, if you pull that out and it's nice brown color and it's not too green, then it's kind of ripe and ready to go, okay? So it's a color, it's a texture thing, not too mushy, not too that. And what I like to do is just take this guy and I cut it right down the middle. Remember, an avocado has a seed in the middle, but be careful because if it's really overripe, that seed will just break right in half. And I like to go right around in a circle, right around in a circle. And then I like to open for freshness. Oh, that's a beautiful avocado. That's really nice. That's a really, really nice one. Okay. And then what I'll do is to make it easy, I'll cut it into uh, quarters. Because then it's so much easier to work with. You know, once you cut it in quarters, it's so much Take the peel. Oh, I didn't do it. Let me put it back. <laughs> it's easy. You just take it from the top and boo, you just peel it right off. That's when you know you have a beautiful, nice, ripe avocado. And when I cut this, I actually like to turn it over. I don't know why I do it this way. I don't cut them this way. You can. I'm sure you can. But I do it this way because it gives me maybe a little better um, view of how thick I'm cutting it. And people ask me all the time, how many pieces you cut? Three or four? Well, guess what? Avocados come in different sizes, so you have to actually use some judgment. Okay? And we're going to put these in here, and we're going to put these right there in the middle. As you can see, my ingredients are kind of in the middle. Right? You can see it that way, how huh? they're in the middle. And what I'm going to do is, and I'll show you from that angle, I want to grab from the bottom to the top. Okay? I'm getting my hands wet a little bit, clapping off the excess. Grab it from the bottom to the top. See how I'm tucking this stuff in? I'm, I'm holding it in here at the top as I'm grabbing it. I'm tucking it in, tuck 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 it in. Roll it, okay? And I'm still manipulating this. Like, I'm in control of my rice. I'm, I'm the boss, okay? So I'm moving it. And see how the joint is on the bottom of the cutting board right there? Okay? And then, oh, I forgot to tell you, my, my makisu, my sushi rolling mat, I covered it in plastic. So it's all covered in plastic. Now I'm going to grab this guy here from the top. And you can see from the sides. Look at that. I'm going straight up and down, actually, kind of straight up and down. And I'm kind of edging the top. See, straight up and down. And I'm edging the top. Doop. And it's a little, it's more of a square than a circle, right? But I'm lifting it up. And I'm taking it off. And then when I go like this, I wet my hands a little bit. And I go choo -choo 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 on the ends. Choo -choo -choo. You got to give it a little pat, OK? And then when you cut. Get your knife in the water a little bit, and you want to cut like you're playing the violin, okay? So I'm going to show you from this view, maybe. You want to use a lot of knife. Don't cut like you're cutting vegetables, because that's not going to work for sushi. You can't cut straight down. So I'm going to get a little moisture here, and you want to cut this guy like, um, there you go, perfect. No, no, that's good. We're going to cut it like you're using a violin. A lot of knife. See how I'm using that? I'm moving it. I'm exaggerating that a little bit now. And I'll show you, to prove to you, like, I'll use very little pressure, like, uh, 
you can see I'm barely holding the knife with just a couple fingers. So I'm just moving it. There's a lot of knife motion, okay? And you go to down, okay? And you can wet again, okay? And I, I, I mean, it's, it helps to move quickly as well, if you can. And you can always kind of reshape, little touch up, right? Okay, and then we'll go back up here. And let's just flip these guys over. Boom, 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 boom. Oop, avocado came out, put him back in. Put him back in, put him back in, he fell out. Okay, and then we have it like this. And then you can always just give it a little tiny angle. And that's what makes it really nice and presentable, right? Isn't that, isn't that interesting? Just a little tiny kind of presentation thing, just like that. And it makes all the difference in the world. All right, and we'll just put that on our plate there. And there's that, right? Okay. So that's like a basic California roll. Some people put cucumber in, some people don't. Some people put cani salad, some people just put the regular cani sticks, you know, and all that. And it just depends on how you want to do it. All right, let's check on our little shrimps here. Um, let me see if I can even touch them. Ah, okay. Our shrimps came out of the uh, air fryer. Nice. What I like to do is I like to pull the tails off. So. Um, just kind of pinch it and pull the tail off. Be careful because it's so hot. And I have really, I, I have sushi man hands, so I'm super wimpy. Just pull the little tail off, okay? And then those are ready to go. I like to pull the tails off. Okay, now we're gonna get our nori again. Remember how to lay the rice, okay? How much, how big is your rice ball? How big is it? Right, I heard you, baseball, yes, about a baseball. I can't hear anybody, I'm kidding, okay. So you grab about the size of a baseball, Okay, and remember, light touch, not too heavy, you know what I'm saying, not too heavy, not too heavy, but I'm making an oval, and I'm going to do it from the top side of this, and just the top half, and squeeze it like a tube of toothpaste, like I'm squeezing a tube of toothpaste across, just so it's like, um, see, it's only on the top half, okay, and then what I'm going to do is, remember, I'm going to just be the boss, and I'm going to push this guy down using fingertips and thumbs, and I'm manipulating it as if it was the giant, like, like pizza dough. I know that sounds kind of weird, but that was the best analogy that I can come up with. It's a, like a pizza dough, right? And you just do it like this, and you cover all the edges, and you make sure it's level. You want to make sure it's level, you know, nothing crazy mountains. You don't want any weird mountains and, and crevices and dips and stuff like that. We're gonna put a little sesame seed on top. We're gonna to flip this bad boy over. And now we're gonna put our shrimp tempuras in the middle here, okay? Put our shrimp tempuras in the middle and we're gonna to try to roll this whole guy up. Sometimes you gotta smash it in there a little bit. And remember what I said, the joint is touching the cutting board, right? The joint of the roll is, is perpendicular to the cutting board itself. We're gonna get our sushi roller mat, lift up the sides. Give it a little, little bit, and I'm doing it kind of firm, okay? It's not that gentle. I mean, you want to be gentle. You never want to smash the grains of rice, but I'm, I'm, I'm not being that gentle with it. You know what I mean? I'm, like I said, I'm the, you got to be the boss of your sushi rice, okay? Okay, now here's a technique that you're all going to love. I hope. I hope you love it. We're going to take our avocado again, and we're going to take our quarter piece of avocado. We're going to get a nice quarter piece here. And we're going to get it peeled. Now, this is going to take some practice, and I don't want you to be frustrated, and I don't want you to um, feel like it's impossible, because this next technique, although it looks cool, it's actually very, very, it's not as hard as you think. Okay? Now, what we're going to do is, we're going to take our knife, and I like using a kind of a skinnier knife. Um, this knife is not too fat. It's a, it's a thinner knife. And I'm going to, Oh, good. This is a good angle. You can see it. I'm touching the tip to the cutting board, and I'm giving it a little tiny angle, just a little bit. And I'm holding this avocado here, okay? So what I'm doing is, as I'm coming here, I'm going to just slice off a little bit. And I know that looks super hard, and it's going to be hard when you first, when you first do it. It's going to be a little bit hard. And then you're going to pick up a little bit at a time, and you're going to just put it right on top of your roll. So it kind of looks like, like a dragon scale, right? I guess you could say that, right? So I don't know what the best angle is. I don't know if you could see it like this or like, is, you see it this way better? Is that better? 
I'm kind of doing it at a weird angle, okay? So can you hear it actually touching my cutting board? You can hear the tip actually touching it, right? And this is how you're gonna lay this beautiful avocado on top of the roll there, okay? Okay, now when we get that back there, again, we're gonna grab this right with our sushi mat, and we're just gonna make that nice um, consistent shape, right? A nice rounded shape. And we're gonna do this on the side. And look at that, look at that. Isn't that beautiful? We can cut this in one of two ways. We can just cut it all the way across. Well, let's just cut it all the way across. I like to cut it in the center first to give me a little gauge of where the halfway point is. And then um, I'll usually cut this into sometimes 10 pieces just so it's easier to eat, you know? Sometimes you can cut it into eight, but whatever, whatever you want, whatever. There's no wrong way. I don't even know how many pieces that is. That might be too many. And then I'm gonna um, shape it again, just to give it a little shape. That was a delicate touch, right? And then I'm gonna put it back on my plate here. And the key is here, we wanna give it just a little bit of angle. Doot, 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 doot. I'll take half of it and I'll just do it at a little angle. This angle is the key telling you when you just put it at an angle everything looks so cool look at that look at how cool that looks and then you just put it right on your plate here okay we'll just stick it on the plate boom right here stick it on my plate i don't know if you could see that but and we're going to stick it all on our plate there now our well, look that's coming together right that is coming together okay so this is what i called the rocky roll at the restaurant back in the day it's a rocky roll now what i'm going to do on this one is I got a little teriyaki sauce. You can buy it or you can make it, whatever, not a big deal. Just put a little drizzle, a little drizzle on your Rocky Roll. A little drizzle, boom, 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 boom. Oh yeah, that looks good. Now, I got here is a little, you know what Kewpie mayonnaise is, huh? You guys have seen this in the Japanese store, that Kewpie mayonnaise. I put a little shiracha sauce in the Kewpie mayonnaise and I mixed it up with the hashi. I mixed it, mixed it up. And that's how I made this little tiny spicy mayo sauce. So I like to drip this on the top too. And I like to do a little tiny, ooh, look at that, little squiggle. Look at that, look at that. Doesn't that look good? Little squiggle. And then now we're getting our green onions. And this is what the moment was. This is why we did it for the garnish. Sprinkle it on. And we're gonna sprinkle on a little bit of masago. Look at that, look at that, look at that. Oh my goodness, that is lovely, boom. And there we go, look at that, how'd that come out? Look at that, look at that. Oh, that's coming together, right? And then you can get your little, this is where you get your like little lemon slices too. You know, you get your little lemon slices and then you can just fan them out. Fanning them out is like the easiest thing to do when you fan them out, you can put them like that. You can even put them um, up here if you want to like you can put them vertically um, you know however you want to do it however you want to do it just for your design make it all beautiful design however you want to do it maybe that looks better this way okay okay all right and then what I like to do for these rolls is top it with a little tiny sesame seed not too much just for that little extra presentation maybe give them a little extra flavor as well okay okay I know uh, I only wanted to make this about an hour, okay? So we're almost there. So let me show you one kind of final technique, if you will. Um, this is called hosomaki. Hosoi, hosoi means thin or skinny, and maki means roll, okay? <coughs> okay, we're gonna put this um, mat down first, okay? And then we're gonna put the shiny side shiny side down on the mat, okay? And you can see I'm putting it towards the bottom here, right? A little towards the bottom. I'm gonna use much less rice because this is gonna be for the tek, uh, kapamaki, the, the cucumber roll. We're gonna use a lot less rice than for those other rolls, like that California roll and that shrimp roll. A lot less rice, almost half the amount, okay? Yeah, almost half the amount, probably. Really little, okay? I know you can't really tell by looking. Now, instead of doing it on the top, this time I'm going to do it on the, uh, kind of in the center, kind of in the center. And I'm going to do the same thing 
and I'm going to push it down. Be the boss of your rice. But we're going to make this a much, much thinner layer than those other rolls because this time we're going to roll it with the nori on the outside. So clearly, you can see me going back into my bin and adding rice. This is the thing about laying rice. If you got too much, take it out, put it back in your bin. If you have too little, go back in your bin and grab some more. It's a constant adjustment. It's a constant adaptation. Just like life, right? It's never perfect the first time. You always got to adjust. You always have to assess where you are and see what's happening and make the right adjustments, okay? You always have to be... Let's put a little sesame seed inside the rice this time. Inside. Because this is going to be for a kapamaki, a cucumber roll, okay? So I'm going to get this here, get some cucumbers here. We're going to try to put these guys right in the middle, right in the middle. And I'm going to roll, same thing, from the bottom to the top, bottom to the top, okay? And I'm going to take this, I'm going to hold this in here, and I'm going to try to tuck that nori. Yeah, you can see it, good. You can see that, good. I'm tucking it in, right? trying to tuck it in, see? Tuck it in, and uh, tuck it in, make sure it overlaps. And then I make the square shape. It's kind of like a square. Flat bottom, flat top, square, okay? The important thing is you gotta tuck that, you gotta tuck that nori in, right? Underneath, or else it's not gonna stay. And I don't know if you remember what I said, every time you roll, what do you do on the sides? Choo, 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 right? You gotta do the little choo, choo. You gotta straighten that guy out, okay? Same thing, we're going to cut this one into six pieces and we're going to let our knife do the work. We're going to try to get a lot of motion on that knife. We're going to try to get a lot of motion on that knife, right? And you notice that I flip it around, right? Because I want to get those clean edges on the side. Wow, that looked professional. I actually cut it exactly in half. <laughs> that never happens at home, okay? And now this is hard because you've got to cut it into thirds, okay? So it's a little more challenging but with some practice and um, some good eyeballing, you can cut it into thirds like that. My goodness, look at that, look at that. That was lucky, that came out perfect. That came out, <laughs> that was lucky. Okay, that, that's not skill, that was luck. And then same thing, angle down, angle down, and then you have a nice little kapamaki there too, okay? So that is called hosomaki, hosomaki, right? Uh, maybe literally translated, it's kind of like a skinny roll because it's hosoi. Hosoi means kind of skinny. And, okay. So I showed you um, a couple of basic different types today. Um, we went over, um, we went over uh, the California roll style, which is also just like this um, shrimp roll. Okay. So this is called a reverse roll, uramaki, uramaki. Ura means back or backwards or behind and maki means to roll because it's a backward roll because the rice is on the outside, right? And then I showed, we showed you first the gunkan maki, right? Which is like the battleship rolls, right? These type. And then the last one we did was this hosomaki. Hosoi means skinny and that's hosomaki roll. And the last thing I'm going to show you really quick before we go to some questions, as you want to think of some questions, is... We are going to do a little bit of nigiri sushi, and I'm not even going to really show you how to do this because nobody really makes this at home. I mean, yeah, some of you do. You have the molds and stuff like that, but um, I'm just going to show you really quickly. Um, this was the uh, fish that I cut earlier, right? So what I do is I put the fish. I'm right-handed, so the fish is going to be in the left hand, okay? Fish is going to be in the left hand. It's right on the lines of these fingers, and I'm barely holding it with my thumb right there, okay? And with, the, with my dominant hand, I'm going to get a small bowl of rice. Small ball. Small ball. Small ball of rice. And as you can see, I'm shaping it in my hand, and I've already shaped it 80% of what it's going to be. Now, my, uh, this nigiri technique is not, this is not traditional. I learned kind of a weird way, but uh, that's the way I learned it. Okay, so I'm going to put it in here. I'm going to put it in here, and then this is what I call, I do a little Spider-Man grab, a little Spider-Man grab, and I do the edges, and I do my finger roll to the top, and I grab it on the sides, and I do a quarter turn and grab it on the side. So, look, 
That was kind of fast and the camera angle makes it super hard to see. So we're not gonna really focus on that today. Um, you know, you see the sushi chef, this is what they do. They knead the rice and they just go like this, right? And then they put it on their board. So I'm not even gonna focus too much on that for today. But um, this is nigiri style sushi, right? So this is what people most commonly see or hear, think of when they think of sushi, right? They think of this nigiri style. So um, if you're really ambitious, uh, maybe I'll try to make a video on nigiri sushi too, but you can do these as well if you have the ability and the skill to um, you know, cut the fish like this, okay? So that is basically the various different styles and kinds of sushi. And remember, have fun with your ingredients. I mean, yes, there are traditional purists out there that are very, very, you know, traditional in their sushi making. They want it to be perfect. They would actually never put sauces on there the way I just did, right? They would never do that. They would never do a lot of things. But hey, I figure if you're doing this at home and you're doing this for your friends and your family, you can do whatever you want. Um, just like that person said, um, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to put onions in my sushi. You can't stop me. You know what? I love it. I love it. I love hearing that. Um, okay, really quickly, um, go ahead and start thinking of questions if you want. But I see one right now that um, how do you wrap the bamboo mat in plastic? Okay, here's how you do it. <laughs> Since I don't have plastic with me, we're going to do miming, okay? I'm going to mime this out for you. We're going we're gonna to act it out like a mime, okay? It's going to be amazing. Okay, so what we do is you get the big roll of plastic and you put it out here, and you put it out. It's going to be pretty long. Then you put your mat this way on the long plastic. So I'll do it this way for you, like this. The long plastic goes this way, and then you're going to wrap it from the bottom to the top, and the top to the, to the bottom, and then you'll close it on the sides. You see the sides are very skinny, there's not that much. Close it on the sides, and then move it to the side, get another long sheet of plastic, and then put it down again, and just do the same thing from the bottom, the top, and then wrap it on the sides again. That's how I like to do it. I like to do the bottom and the top a very big overlap. And then the sides can just be enough to close it off, and that will be fine. If you really wanna cheat, <laughs> if you really want to cheat, you can get a gallon, you could just get a gallon Ziploc bag, like one of these big ones, and just throw your mat in there. I think the mat, I think the mat fit, look, the mat fits right in there. So just throw it in the Ziploc, and that'll get the job done. No problem. Easy to change. So as soon as you're done, you just throw the bag away, and you're good to go. Right? So that's a good one. Um, so I just want to remind you again, if you have a question, please feel free to Raise your hand, and uh, I'm not looking at the gallery. Maybe um, Carl can call on you, and uh, you'll be on the recording. And if you don't want to be on the recording, just type your question in the chat. Um, Carl, do you see any questions out there? Someone want yeah, to ask actually, at, at the very beginning, there was one on uh, wondering if you can repeat your recipe for how to make the soup. Oh, I will. I will. So it's, it's eight parts rice vinegar, five parts sugar, one half part salt. And some people have a question with the parts. Well, guess what? If you want to make a lot of it, use gallons. If you want to make a little bit, use ounces. See what I'm saying? So it's not about the size. It's eight. It's the ratio, eight to five to a half. And I will type that in the description when I make this video, uh, when I upload the video to the CBE YouTube channel. That's CBE, Center for Buddhist Education on YouTube, okay? All right, Carl, any hey, other? Yeah, we had another question here. It says, do you need to fan the rice while cooling to get the sheen? You know, that's a good question. And we have seen our BWA members making sushi rice throughout the dawn of time. And you've seen them put it all over these big tables and they're fanning it. They fan it because they need to cool it down faster because they're making so many pounds of rice. When I made this rice at home, I actually didn't fan it. Okay, as you can see, I have a pretty um, shallow uh, bin. It's not that big. You don't want to make it in a big, deep bin of rice. You want to be able to spread it out where it's shallow enough, you know what I mean, that you can mix it. And I prefer to just let it cool at room temperature. The entire cooling process should take about 45 minutes to an hour, 
meaning it's not a rush thing. So you just let it cool. And in doing so, you're mixing it while the rice is steaming hot. So that's infusing that sushi vinegar into the rice. It's infusing that flavor into it as you're mixing it. So the cooling is one thing, but it's the flavoring at the same time. And it's that consistent mixing from top to bottom, top to bottom, and then chop, 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 chop to get all the grains in there. Yep. So that's a good question. Uh, those were the only ones in the chat. So if anybody does have a question, they're welcome to un -mic, uh, sorry, yeah, unmute, unmute and uh, shout it out. Yeah, so I, I hope you are all able to learn something a little bit different today. Um, learn something new. I don't know if this is all stuff that everybody already knew, um, especially with the California rolls. Some people, you know, don't know that they can flip it over directly on their cutting board. You know, that's a big technique that people don't um, always see. Yeah. Are, question, any other? Any? Yeah, there is another one in the chat here. It says, if you. If you don't wrap the bamboo mat, say you were making something other than sushi, does the mat start to impart flavor to the food? So they have to be recycled out. Mm, that's a good question. So for me personally, on a personal level, I always wrap my mats. Um, and I've seen people, I've seen them all the time. They don't wrap them and they put the nori directly on it. You know, I, I, you're right, I've seen it all the time. But yeah, in my mind, anything that touches food over time is absolutely gonna get, um, kind of just dirty and, and, and that will affect flavor. So on a personal level, all my sushi mats in my house are wrapped. So you'll see them wrapped. So when I go home today, I'm gonna rip all this off and then I'm gonna wrap the new one and I throw it in my drawer ready to go. So it's always ready to go for the next time, you know? Okay. So that's a good question. Yeah, we have another question about the container that you use for the rice. Do you rec recommend plastic, metal or glass? So, you know, I, that's, another, that's another school of thought I've seen. People always worry about, you know, especially when you mix stuff, right? People always say use glass, right? So don't use metal when you're dealing with things that are acidic, right? Typically things that are acidic, you don't want to use stainless steel or metal. You want to use a glass bowl. You can always use glass, right? Glass is always going to be good. But guess what? I'm using plastic. It's okay. It's okay. <laughs> Plastic's fine. Um, you get these at Walmart and Target. They're super cheap. Am I supposed to use a wooden sushi mixer? Probably. Traditionally, it's a bit, you know, those big wooden circle guys, right? And they're circular, so the mixing motion is much more natural and it's better. Absolutely, if you, if you have the, the uh, dedication and the traditional spirit to really do that with the, with the proper wooden one, that's what they say infuses like the most flavor and traditional. But like I said, for home style, what we're doing here, I think it's okay. I think it's okay. Yeah. Uh, Koichi? Hi. What's the ratio of the soup to the rice? I mean, Ooh, how do you know when a, to stop? That's a good question, Judy. So when I say one cup of rice, I'm talking about the home cup. <laughs> you know, everybody knows what we're talking about, right? The little plastic cup that comes with the Kome scooper. Um, I don't, that's not really a, a measuring cup like of rice, right? It's not, right? It's a different measurement. But so one cup of kome is two ounces of the sushi mixed sushi vinegar. So if you remember, who remembers how many cups of rice I made? It was written in the video. Who remembers how many cups I made today? Anybody? I made four cups of rice. So how many ounces of vinegar is that? Eight, right? Two ounces of vinegar per one cup of cooked rice. That's right. That's right. Very good. Any other questions out there? Uh, there's another one, comment, or maybe it's the question Elsa says, when you served your plate of sushi with a rocky roll, how would you position or present the plate to the client? Oh, there is a top and a bottom. That's a great question, Carl, um, or whoever asked the question. That's a great question. Um, okay. Okay, so for me, <laughs> okay, for me, let's say I'm right-handed. So remember, okay, traditionally, sushi making is probably a very, uh, what do you, what's the word I'm looking for? I want to choose the right wording here. I want to be careful, but obviously sushi making is a very kind of a 
patriarchal thing. It's a male dominated thing traditionally, right? I'm not, you know, that's just how it was. I'm not saying that's how it's, it is now, but so, and it's also uh, more of the dominant thing. So it's right, right hand, right? So they don't care if you're left-handed. They would probably made you do it right-handed back then. So for me, everything is angled um, to the right. So as you can see this dish, if I presented it to you, I would turn it this way and hand it to you this way. And I know that doesn't really help you. Uh, I'm not explaining it correctly, but um, well, I guess there's not really a, a, a technical answer to that. When you present things on your plate, you have a presentation in your mind. So I'm presenting it from my chef, my viewpoint, my chef's perspective. That's how I am creating the presentation on the plate. So I have a top and a bottom relative to me. So when I hand it to you, I would flip it around and present it to you like this from top to bottom. And remember, traditionally, back in the olden, day, olden days, you would actually just make, you know, people would sit at the sushi bar, and remember, they would order one order at a time. Like, they'd sit down, and they would go, maguro, maguro onigashi, and then the chef would go, hai, hai, maguro onigashimasu, and then they would just go, boom, 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 and then they'd make the maguro, boom, 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 and they would make it, right? And they would literally present one thing at a time, like that. Right? And they would give them their two pieces like that, boom. And that's how sushi bars really began, right? Uh, and they would go one at a time. Only in America, not, I shouldn't say only in America, but in the American evolution of it, this is where we, we don't wait. I'm like, dude, I want, I want five Rocky Rolls, I want three orders of Maguro, and I want all that. And then that's when these big plates started coming out, right? So that's, I'm not saying that is an exclusively an American or foreign ideal, but it's a little bit different than traditional. So everything has morphed and it's taken on its whole new language and definition and meaning and everything. So you can say what's traditional and what's not, but California roll, as an example, there's no California roll in Japan. That, where'd that come from? California, right. So, you know, it's, it's taken on its whole new meaning, if you will. And you can either accept it and adapt to it, or you can just be mad in the corner and say, that's not sushi. Well, I'm going to eat these shrimp rolls and, uh, you know. Any other questions, Carl? <coughs> uh, actually, that's all that was in chat that I could see. Um, so if anybody else has a question, okay, they're welcome great. to unmute. <coughs> okay, Wait, great. I have well, another, oh, I'm sorry. I have another ahead. one. You know, that one that you just put down with the sashimi on the, across the top, is there a length that it's supposed to be, or because I was wondering, you didn't <coughs> sorry um, handful of rice and a little piece of sashimi, so that's yeah. I mean, it's part. all about presentation size. So traditionally in Japan, the nigiri is actually small. Only mm. in America do we do these big old giant hunks. Like if you go to Japan, nigiri is small. Mm. So there is no again, there's no definition. You know what I mean? Of you know what I mean? But obviously, it's meant to be a bite-sized experience. It's meant to be absorbed all in one shot, boom. And even at the high, high, high-end restaurants, like if you've seen, uh, what, what's the one, what's the big Netflix one, the no, Nobu? Anyway, you know, he, we don't even, he puts wasabi on it, and he brushes the shoyu on it. Like only here in America do we make the big old concoction of wasabi paste and all that, but the chef prepares it exactly as it's meant to be eaten. And you're supposed to take that one piece and boop, you know, and, and get that whole experiential flavor in once. Mm -hmm. So yeah, there's no technical um, right or wrong size. We just kind of do it however you want. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. All right, any, anybody else? Well, if you have any questions, please feel free to um, email cbe at bcahq.org. And uh, I see that uh, Yumi was kind enough to put the uh, CBE links in the chat, the donation. My email's in there, so hit me up anytime. And when I post this video on there, I'll try to put the other video links as well to like how to cut tuna and stuff like that. I'll put those in the description so you can see some of my other sample videos. Um, but again, thank you all so much for joining us today for this different CBE session. Uh, we hope you enjoyed it. We hope it was something that was timely for your upcoming holidays. 
and uh, we just hope it's something a little bit fun for all of you. So thank you so much for having me here today. Yeah, Reverend Hirano. Thank you, like you Koichi. Thank you, Koichi. I wish I was saying Shokuzen no Basho rather than just <laughs> so I could eat your fish and put your love too far. So we'll close today's program with Basho. Namo Amida Butsu. 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 Namo Amida Butsu.